Okay, it's eight, and uh, let me take a moment to introduce our guest for the day. Uh, welcome, Abhishek sir. So, guys, Abhishek uh, Basumalik sir is a well-known investor in Indian markets. Uh, he's a founder and chief equity advisor at Intel Sense, a SEBI registered advisory, and that was started way back in 2018, and it has been doing great since then. And recently, sir has also started, and he's also founder of uh, Quantumental dot in. And apart from that, those who are uh, on Value Picker, so they must be knowing. So, sir is a moderator at uh, Value Picker and has added a very valuable insights quite a long time. And uh, sir is also sir also regularly writes for AT Market section of the Economic Times, and uh, almost twenty two years of uh, investing experience and. Uh, Sir, as far as educational background is concerned, sir has been in computer science, and uh, he also holds a degree in general management IT from IIM Calcutta. And he had uh, worked in IT uh, for quite a long, and uh, yeah. So, sir, uh, a, a very warm welcome, and thanks for agreeing to it. And guys, <laughs> when I ask, uh, we will be hosting an educational spaces. So, sir, readily agreed, and he wanted to share his experience. Yeah, sir, over to you. I I don't know for some reason the your voice did not uh, was not coming through. So you didn't hear anything at all, sir. I heard the first uh, part of the introduction, but uh, that's okay. I mean, okay, okay. So, sir, uh, would request on your part also. You can also advise us sort of your uh, how it started for you and the introduction thing, which I missed on my part. So, over to you, sir. so nothing much from the introduction perspective i think uh, been at uh, you know i've been investing since the year 2000 and uh, uh, in fact i remember uh, when i started uh, it was like uh, just just uh, got into uh, work out of college and uh, sensex was below 3000 that time nifty was below 1000 and i do I, i i can't remember the name of the tv channel uh it was not there was no cnbc there that time i think there was a, a, a similar name i think uh, tv not tv 18 but something you know the same same group same set of people who were running a, a channel a business channel at that time i think they were the only business channel uh, they would celebrated the you know, move of nifty Going over thousand and Sensex three thousand something like that. That and then that kept happening every thousand points. Two uh, thousand crash happened. Then the markets actually started doing well quite uh, after a couple of years. So initial few years was very interesting. A lot of things uh, happened. Uh, that was that was a learning phase. First few years was a learning phase. Uh, Got more serious, more uh, involved after a few years, uh, simply because I started with no knowledge, uh, completely self-learned, uh, read as much as possible. So when I started, I did not even know what EPS meant. Uh, you know, so everything. And I was lucky that uh, internet was available starting then, and. Uh, you know you, you, uh, when when i started we we didn't have mobile phones etc at least uh, most of us we did not i think we got mobile phones a couple of years later when the incoming was made free i think that's when most of uh, uh, indians started uh, buying mobile phones and uh, so that's how it all started it started i mean a friend of mine uh, gifted me a book uh, called uh, rich dad poor dad i i hope Uh, all of you have read that. Uh, sort of uh, grounded me uh, with the idea that uh, you need to be financially free, and the way to do that is either to run a business or to uh, invest in somebody else's business. You can't really become financially free, uh, or rather, I would not say you can't be, but it's very very difficult to be financially free uh, being a salaried employee. So. that was uh, that was a start, starting point sir so uh, sir i have heard you saying the uh, i uh, i mean uh, 
telling about the importance of second income so can we infer that the book which you just referred rich dad poor dad that was the trigger point uh, which made you think that there has to be some second income source and uh, how how it how it progressed for you sir yeah so see simple for most of us uh, you know uh, for people like us uh, we are middle class people uh, most of us don't have an option other than uh, a job and after we start a job we have an income and we have some moderate savings that comes out of the income so what is what is our way out for people like us the only way out is you start investing in cash flow cash flow returning asset so something where from which you will get cash flow now typically if you look at any other asset class whether it is gold or real estate or anything else is very low probability or as for example in gold there's no cash flow right you you put money in gold but you don't get anything in return similarly in real estate today let's say you buy a property uh, what is the and and if, let's say you assume that you are not using it you are buying that property uh, just as an investment so net net what is happening is you are paying its uh, you know the property taxes and the maintenance and upkeep and all that and if you are renting it out you are getting a rental yield which is you know in india somewhere between 1 to 3% at most you will get 4% returns uh which you know in, in if you are doing rentals if you are doing investing or if you are saving money in fixed deposits or in insurance uh you know lic kind of stuff you are getting 3 to 5 five and a half 6% returns so net net you are losing money over the long term so the only asset class where you benefit from cash flow you know if you are doing it in a you know in a sensible way and i'm not even saying that you have to do great you have to be a great stock picker etc etc even if you just put money in index funds in fact that's what i tell everyone who's starting off right you put money in index funds uh at least you start getting you know 10 12 13% kind of returns right and when we started off uh, you know 20 years 20 years back at least index returns were 15 16% so roughly over a 10 15 20 year horizon and especially people who are young who are starting their careers uh, people who are in their 20s say early 30s you have another 25 30 years of uh, where you can accumulate your wealth that is the period where slowly once you accumulate uh you know stocks what happens is one the stocks go up in value second your dividend yield roughly you know comes to if, even if you are buying growth stocks uh typically your dividend yield at the portfolio level is going to come to you know between 0.5 to 1% right uh so over a period of time over a period of you know 15 20 years that uh, dividend that you get also becomes meaningful so the whole idea is to keep accumulating cash flow generating assets right as a source of uh, you know wealth creation as a source of income if i may call it that oh. all <clears throat> right sir so sir when it comes to like when a person starts his or her journey in the market say they come across various say, investing books and business magazines but what it comes to uh, investing books we can still get a recommendation or uh, such kind of thing that we get you know these are popular books the western books or in indian context so we grow, go through that but when it comes to sir business magazine and that stuff we often get clueless because initially we doesn't find so much of like when we read it uh, we couldn't gather much information out of it and even it is not that much interesting as books are so how one can progress over that path by i mean they want to gain after uh, say uh, sticking to a base, business magazine or you know, that stuff so first of all i will tell uh, tell you i mean so basic things one is read uh, at least one business newspaper every day you know whether it is et or you know mint or business standard or hindu business line uh, financial express these are i think the five that are available pretty much uh, i i actually read all five but uh, i'm not Uh, and that that's primarily because you know uh, i i am full time into this i don't have anything else to do so you know i do that but 
if you are if you are you know doing this as a part time thing uh, which is absolutely fine right uh, start off with reading any one newspaper if you have if you don't have a lot of knowledge about the markets at least read the headlines of all the articles in the newspaper all the articles don't skip anything just read the headlines every day what happens what is the the beauty is that knowledge is also has a compounding curve right so first few months first maybe 6 year 6 months 1 year 2 years you will not be able to grasp everything but slowly over a period of time you will have a much better understanding awareness of what is happening in the business world around you right you will have an understanding of the business people who are involved so that is a very very a uh, good uh, learning that is there then comes uh, the magazines now i personally prefer uh, reading magazine articles uh, simply because they are long form what happens with uh, newspapers is they the focus on newspapers is too much in the here and the now it is everybody is focusing on what has happened yesterday right whereas in a news in a, in a magazine they are focusing on what are the most important things over the last uh, say two weeks or one month now the advantage is that by the time frame itself they have to filter out a lot of things which are not very relevant uh, over a longer period right something some news happened over one day it dissipated over the next two three days that will never come into a new, into a magazine so the advantage of a magazine is it is coming to you to an extent pre filtered see in today's day and age the biggest problem is how to filter information right so you know 20 years back or 30 years back when i hear about you know other you know big investors in india uh, you know when say bharat shah speaks of uh, his uh, formative years or ramdev ji speaks about their years or ramesh ji speaks about their years the accessibility of information was very difficult you know annual reports used to be difficult to get today everything is available you know investor pro- pro- uh, presentations are there for everybody previously all of these were classified information only available to large institutions today you go to a bsc website or you go to screener pretty much all the information that is available that is there in the public domain is there you go to value picker everything you know people are putting there uh, for everyone else there you go to twitter and so the point is that there is an overload of information you want a filtering system right so magazine is one way of filtering information which is not time sensitive right so that is one way of looking at it and and there is no specific so uh, you know you can take your pick whichever you like you know whether it is a business today or a you know outlook business fortune india uh, forbes and business india i think these five are again there uh out of these if i had to pick one i would pick business today uh, because they have a very in my opinion very good mix of uh, you know good coverage uh if i have to pick two i would probably pick business uh, today and uh, forbes india but uh, you know you you could take your pick i mean you don't have to uh, read one any specific ones even i think business india also has Uh, probably not so uh, uh, not as famous but i think business india does a very good job of profiling uh, smaller companies or you know mid sized companies which are not covered in uh, a lot of other uh, publications so so you know even business india is also a decent read all right sir so sir you were into full time job for quite a long so how you were able to manage both the things parallelly because as you have so, uh, mentioned in yeah, the yeah yeah so see the thing simple thing right i mean how much time do you really need if you have a longer time horizon long term uh, you know if you are a long term investor you need four five stocks uh, a year so assume you need say four to six stocks a year that means you are getting between three to you know two to three months to research uh, every every stock that you are buying which is more than enough see people think that uh, you know you cannot be a part time investor and be good at it that is absolutely not correct you don't need 
you know human ga some amounts of time even today i have a lot of friends who are you know exceptionally good investors who are part time investors only if you are doing a lot of trading in and out and all that do you need you know to be in front of the screen uh, and all that but if you if you are uh, investing Uh, for the long term, or even if you are, you know, doing slightly long term uh, positional trading, where you are holding some a uh, stock for a few months, it, it's, you don't have to be a full time investor. There's no requirement. There's no need for it. Right, sir. Sir, in the previous, uh, I mean, interactions uh, which I heard from you, so you have always focused uh, that mindset in market is the prime thing, and it's almost eighty uh, percent mindset, and everything else is twenty percent. So, uh, like uh, initially when we start, we are basically focusing on that twenty percent. So, how one can evolve on the behavioral side and uh, come to a position where uh, we can ignore most of the noise and stick to the points you mentioned? Yeah. right right that's a brilliant question see the thing is that if you really analyze you know your own uh, success and failures you will yourself realize that uh, and and I, i'm you know this is for everyone right people will realize that you will, you have made a lot of money uh, in stocks that initially you thought may not be very good and vice versa you may have you know uh, lost money or not made money in stocks which you thought were very good the point here is it is not the identification of the stock which is very important at in today's date again you know with social media stock ideas are a dime a dozen right if you go to twitter you will find 100 people giving you 100 ideas every day you will find you know some technical ideas some fundamental ideas somebody is running a screen saying that you know these stocks are great to buy etc etc so the idea ideation is itself not important the problem is that what happens after you find some okay so now you've let's say found uh let let's take a good example uh let's say uh, you found hdfc bank okay Okay, no HDFC Bank is not not a very good example. Let's say you found, uh, say, D Mart. Now, after somebody has said D Mart is good, or you find that you know your you are you like visiting D Mart and you know, buying stuff from there, you come and go to screener, look at the numbers, you see you know growth etc is decent, but P is something obscene, hundred, two hundred, whatever. So you get scared. Is any any high P or any like that? so then after a few months you see that the price is gone up after a few months you see the price has gone further up and suddenly you know you get fomo everybody else is making money you're not making money so you get it and after that the stock corrects and then you panic and sell right so the whole idea you know there is lot of this uh, stories people you know uh, right on specially you know these are uh, those, those clickbait stories available on internet uh 5000% rise in next number of comp- in, in this company in next number of years or had you held on to amazon from x time to y time you would have made you know your 100000 dollars would have become x million billion whatever the point that they don't tell you is boss what has been the uh, volatility what has been the drawdown in between you know has amazon fallen 60 70% sometimes uh, in between and if it has how many of you would be able to withstand a 60 70% fall and not panic and sell so you have to go back and ask yourself what were you doing when you know the covid crash happened if you were there before that what were you doing when the mid cap small cap pretty much the market collapsed in 2018 what were you doing in 2014 when the market started running up what were you doing in 2008 so keep asking yourself these questions and you'll figure out that it's not the identification of the stock which is important ultimately your ability to buy your ability to hold your ability to sell or not to sell 
these decisions are much much more important than just identifying or just somebody coming and telling you this stock you know that this is a great stock to buy so the focus on building the right mindset or focusing on so okay another point here is that there is no right mindset right your mindset may be different from my mindset i have friends who are deep value investors i have friends who are you know day traders options traders so these are people who are completely different so you have to realize what is it that you are comfortable with and then align your thinking your portfolio to that so i'll again give you a concrete example so when i was doing you know when i was working full time i wanted only to invest in long term stocks because i knew that okay when work pressure comes i may not be able to look at uh, you know markets for some time or even some weeks or even months right if there is project pressure i don't know i, I may not be able to look at uh, what is happening forget about buying and selling so you gear towards buying a certain types of stocks now afterwards when i became a full time investor i started approaching into the market differently because now i have time to spend on uh, you know being more active so i said okay other than what i was doing earlier can i explore opportunities which are shorter term in nature which might require much more time involved so again that is a function of my present condition and again your mindset is important somebody who likes to uh, likes momentum for example uh, will not be comfortable doing value buys and vice versa so your mindset is very very important your ability to hold your ability to sell the biggest challenge i have found with uh, you know people is they are unable to sell especially when you know the prices are falling so if there is a stop loss or if people have to get out they are just unable to do that they will keep waiting in hope forever for their price to come back and and uh, so the, again these are all mindset issues while researching also same things happen right uh, nice. okay so so i'll give you another example since i just happened to look at twitter and i'm seeing ayush here uh, who is joined so giving an example uh, so say avanti feeds very well known that ayush uh, has made about a 100 bagger in that i also bought the same stock approximately uh, pretty much at the same time i made 30 40% probably right and i sold but he made a 100 bagger why because his ability to hold his ability to understand the business is different from mine and there will be other examples as well in you know with different people and different uh, you know different examples so these kinds of things are in my opinion bigger determinants of uh you know returns or bigger determinants of your investment acumen than just identifying a good stock all right sir so sir like we normally see that the people prefer averaging down instead of averaging up they have a bias that this has run this much and this won't go further or but i have stock opposite of what you prefer averaging up only right so how how we can come to this because if we, even if you ask me like i also have a bias like if i have identify some stock so <laughs> i prefer averaging down so how we can overcome and what's its relevance you if you would no no nee, there is nothing to overcome so so there is nothing to overcome i'll tell you the basic concept of averaging up versus down so when you are average so there are basically two types of stocks in the in the world there are only two types one is a stock which is in upward momentum and the other is a stock which is in mean reversion i mean uh, basically these are the two types of stocks which you want to buy right you don't want to buy a stock which is uh, continuous to uh, go down right you don't buy a stock hoping that it will continue to go down you will only buy a stock either i mean where you feel that you know the if the stock is falling you expect it to you know stop falling and go up that is mean reversion and or else the other option is if the stock is going up which is up upward trending 
you expect that trend to continue which is trend following right these are the only two mechanisms of uh, stocks uh, stock price movements now if you are fundamentally a trend uh, follower okay and here when i use the term trend follower i don't mean only a price trend follower it could also be a business trend follower right when i talk about business trend it means that continuously quarter on quarter the business trend continues to be very strong so for example we've seen say bajaj finance has been a phenomenal business trend uh asian paints 20 years no down years right so these kinds of companies have have very very long business trends so the point is that if you are buying a trend following stock you want to average up you don't want to average down because when you are averaging down you are never sure why the trend has broken an external investor you don't know what the hell is going on in the markets right no matter how much so that is again one of my uh, you know core beliefs that as an external investor we only know up to a limited point we don't know uh, you know we probably know 30 40% of what is happening in a company in an industry and what is likely to play out so if you know so little right you have to have some kind of mechanism to manage your capital and your man manage the risk of your capital so when if you are buying a business trend you want to keep averaging up which means that you are always in the money you are always buying in the direction of the movement right so every new buy accum adds on to the uh, adds on to the value that you already so your cost price is always lower than the market price so let, let me put it that way in a if you are buying a mean reversion stock you know you are buying a value stock so essentially value is mean reversion where you know today it is cheap you are expecting that tomorrow it will not be cheap right in that particular case you can average down there is not it, it, it doesn't mean that uh, you should not average down at all it means that you have to know in your mind which one is which if you are buying a stock which you are you know today is a value buy tomorrow you are expecting a turn around then you can average down but again in my opinion because we don't know what is the future look like there has to be a bottom ceiling or, or bottom floor rather where you say that okay i will go so today if i buy at 100 you have to have an exit plan ready that okay if at 70 i will you know put up my hands and say boss something is wrong you know either i don't understand the business well or something has gone wrong in the markets or something else and i will get out right so basically you know all of these are concepts which are uh which are uh sort of overlapping with with each other a concept of risk management concept of having a stop loss concept of averaging up versus down so all of these these things come together right sir sir how the journey of value picker has been uh... um how pivotal role it has played in your journey and again you talked about wisdom of the crowd but if we get so many ideas how to zero in on like basically if you have something in mind you get a contra view or maybe other inputs on that so with that how we can i mean zero in on whether we this is say if we talk about particular company or say it is investable or not how how you do that sir so there are two parts to your question first one was about value picker and maybe about the wisdom of crowds let me address that first and second is how do we you know go about looking at stocks so the value picker i think has been one of the uh, you know biggest influences uh, in my life in my investing life simply because uh, it came at a time when learning uh, curve accelerated a lot that was the first thing second is uh, there were some very very gifted investors who were part of it from the beginning so you know you cannot get people like a hitesh patel or an ayush mittal or uh, you know dhwanil or anand jain uh, you know donald when you have people of this kind of caliber in one place and you get to learn from them your obvious uh, you know learning curve becomes much 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 sharper 
right that that was the first thing second is you also have specialists so you know uh if i have a even today if i have a uh, problem trying to understand uh, the balance sheet of a company there is you know dhiraj that i will go to and ask him dada ye you know ye thoda dekh ke batao kind of things so that network of people who you know personally that happens right so in one word i think it was uh, value picker was a very very instrumental in uh, i think the journeys of most of our people or most of the people who are associated with it from the beginning i think i think nobody will disagree with that uh, uh, from those who were there from the early years uh about what to do with ideas sourced from the crowds and things like that i think see you, first of all you have to understand what you want and what you like i think those are bigger questions that are important right see people everybody starts looking at ki ye kaun sa idea hai what what is required what is you know what what is uh, what is the next stock to buy but i think more important is to understand or trying to understand your own temperament what is it that you like what is it what kind of stock are you going to be able to hold on to right i will not be able to hold on to the same kind of stock uh, maybe that you will be able to hold on to, right the nature of the business will vary i am very very skeptical of it companies because of my history right everybody comes with their own history own context because i know every it service company looks the same you know the just the, the board outside looks different and the email ids of employees are different everything else is the same now with that kind of con- you know concept it for me when i listen to each individual company coming and saying a lot of different things it it doesn't go into my head i i will always wear a skeptical hat whereas somebody who is not in that industry or who has a different view point will have a different uh, kind of uh, thought process so most important is you have to understand you know what kind of investor you are and then uh, one is read around that area improve your circle of competence and the second is pick out people even in twitter or even on you know value picker or any social media that you follow pick out people who who you you gel with right whose mindset uh, you sort of uh, you know who resonate with you and only follow those people and then uh, you know on social media nobody comes with a gun to your head and says that uh, boss you need to uh, follow uh, you know you need to follow xyz and those kinds of things you you get to choose who you follow and again it's it's like social media can be good it can be bad as well because here is one place on twitter for example if you follow hundreds of different people with different styles and different uh, time horizons from yours you will be bombarded with ideas which are not relevant to you right so you know if you are a long term investor with a horizon of 3 to 5 years and somebody is doing you know uh, day trading or swing trading and starts posting five charts a day you will get completely confused what to do right that is one problem the second thing is you try to look for people who are you know more authentic right uh, because again twitter or social media is a place where uh, people would like to show off uh, their profits and they will not talk about the mistakes they made so again over a period of time if you try to self select right the kind of people you are following on social media i think that that's a reasonable way of trying to uh, get help from uh, the wisdom of the crowds right sir so sir uh, yeah. i heard you say never get fixated with one style and always uh, focus on the process and we should not be like uh, we are as time we progress over various things but how can we i mean further the process remains the same or sir the process also goes hand in hand with the changes which we i mean with the over a period of time we get more wise and see more market cycles and may so the process remains the same or it also evolves sir so at a very high level the process remains the same the implementation of the steps in the process keeps changing okay, so i'll give you an example whether you are doing day trading or whether you are investing for the next 30 years there are basically four steps first step is you have to define your universe 
that what is the set of stocks that i will look at somebody who does nifty and bank nifty trading that is their universe somebody who does very long term investing in fmcg stocks that is their universe and so on and so forth right some people call it their uh, circle of competence so basically first step is you have to define your universe the second step is you have to you know uh, select a stock so stock selection is the second step the third step is what is your position sizing okay that how much should i allocate should i allocate 2% should i allocate 20% of my portfolio that is the third step and the fourth step is when do i sell so how long will i hold and when do i sell so these are the essential four steps whether you are you know doing intraday trading or whether you are warren buffett the same steps are there now you have to define so let's say i do multiple things i do quant i do techno funda i do very long term investing uh, so all of that so i went i i try to do those things in different uh, buckets so uh, the, the point i'm trying to make is that at a very broad level the process remains the same but when you are doing individual strategy so if i am doing a long term strategy then my stock selection my holding period my allocation is different compared to when i am doing a short term you know opportunistic positional trading compared to when i am doing my quant systems so you know you, you get what i'm trying to say right yes sir. so so sir, that sir. that's that's the main difference basically all right sir and sir we all have various kind of biases so how what is a good way i mean i know it is different for each individual but again what is a good way to evolve uh, over the biases which we have and so that they shouldn't be the roadblocks in our investing journey and so first of all i think the very important part is uh, actually un- knowing what those biases are so most of the time what happens is we don't even know we are doing a mistake right so one important uh, you know good part of being an investor is that we uh, you know we are it helps us being a good thinker a good you know somebody who reflects on what they do if you are not a reflective person you can it it, it will be very difficult for you to be a good investor so you have to look at what what you are doing right what you are doing wrong and then change your process on a regular basis right uh with that in mind when you are looking at uh, when you are looking at individual uh, you know individual stocks individual industries you know you have to sort of tailor your uh, you know what should i say Mm. uh you know you ha- you have to look at individual situations with the mindset that the biases that you have uh needs to be looked at so again giving you an example uh i i forgot whether it was uh, michael steinart or uh, uh, stan drucken miller one of these two i i forgot uh one of them you know they what they do once in a while is they go they just completely sell all their stocks and these are billion dollar portfolios huh? you know they'll just go and sell everything and then they'll take a one month two months break and then they'll come back and reconstruct the portfolio so the idea here is basically not to get fixated with a endowment bias that okay i have this stock means that you know that stock is better than something else out there so when you are selling something you sort of get rid of this kind of thing so so to so to answer your question in two parts one is first you have to start identifying you know what all biases are there so there are a lot of books uh, text material which are available for you know behavioral biases etc in fact uh, you know just on this topic i was uh, uh, starting to think that uh, you know once maybe once a week or something i'll i'll start trying to put one individual bias and with an example either on twitter or on, on my blog so that uh, 
the idea is to help myself as well as others who are reading it to be able to uh, you know navigate and understand what biases are there and how how they how they come up and what can be done again just to give you another concrete example that i tell people to do is let's say you know you are finding it difficult to sell a stock so what i ask people to do is let's say you have 100 shares and you have you know you are you're just not you know it, it's just not possible for you to sell you know you're just thinking of different things that you know i'll sell when my price comes back etc etc so i just tell them that okay just go and sell 10 shares and see what happens and then people do that they they sell 10 and they come back and say that no 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 i felt a lot of relief because after selling those 10 shares i could realize that uh you know nothing you know so earth shattering has happened so then they are slowly able to sell the uh rest of the stuff so the whole idea here is identifying uh your biases and then actively countering those biases and every you know as and when you mature the problem is you will get more and more biases you know different ones so it's not that you know today maybe i Uh, have been able to get out of my bias of you know price anchoring and selling and all that but today i have different kinds of biases so everybody will have their biases you have to be cognizant of that and try as much as possible to uh, eliminate that sometimes they are not always possible to be eliminated but it helps definitely to know your own biases right sir 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 we all make uh, mistakes in our journey so what are your top 2 3 mistakes uh, which you did in last two decades and uh, your learnings from that and additionally guys the forum is open for uh, questions to abhishek sir so you guys can send in a request i'll approve and you can uh, ask your question yeah sir over to you so mistakes i think lots of mistakes you cannot uh, you know be uh... You, you you cannot be a reasonably successful investor without making mistakes so a lot of problems uh, where you know bought companies which did not uh, work out well uh, but i think you know in in hindsight if i look back i think the bigger mistakes have always been uh, those of uh, mistakes of omission you know some business which i thought you know i understood i i researched maybe sometimes even i bought but then did not hold on which went on to become huge huge multiplier so you know examples are page industries uh example like aishar motors uh, dmart and lot of these kinds of businesses where you know even one page industries can change the uh, investment uh life of an individual and i missed so many of them because i and and these were all not something which were not uh, something i did not know or did not research if you if you miss a stock which was not on your radar that's that's absolutely fine no that's not part of the step one of your process which is the, it may not have been part of your universe but for example page industries aishar both of them dmart all of these were part of my uh, part of my uh, universe i studied them i understood the business but for whatever reasons you know individually each of the reasons were different uh, i missed out on those and each went on to become 100 baggers or even more and uh, so if i compare them with uh, the mistakes of commission you know where i bought something and i lost uh, money on that that would be in my opinion insignificant right what you would have lost maybe you know 20 30 40% at most in a stock before you got out right whereas on the other hand you missed out on a 100 bagger because uh, of uh, you know either your misunderstanding or some you know biases or something like that right sir you gave an example in on which you made 40 bagger and the uh, ayush made 100 bagger so sir in such cases like the selling no, no, decision I, I, you are saying no 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 Sorry? i made okay. 40% and he made 100 okay, okay sir okay sir okay my bad okay. so 
yeah basically you always stress on getting the right price is important but again selling is much more important than that so how you condition that because sir we like initially when we buy anything we sh- uh, you talked about like we should have an objective in mind but again most of us are clueless like when we buy we hardly able to gauge the upside we are looking for and for that reason we are not able to sell at the opportune time or maybe not yeah, yeah. so the uh-huh. best so simple thing dekho if you are buying fundamental based you have to look at a fundamental base if you are looking for a fundamental based exit so the whole idea is in my opinion you have to have certain rules in place for yourself so that you don't get uh, you don't get swayed by what is happening in and around you once you start building those rules and you start implementing that if you are making a mistake then go back and change those rules for yourself right so let's say selling and you you decide that okay if i buy a company and uh, you are expecting that the company is going to grow at whatever Say twenty five percent, and it delivers a ten percent uh, growth in one quarter. The next quarter, same. Third quarter, same. So you decide that okay, I will wait for two quarters, three quarters, one year, whatever is your, you know, comfort zone. And you say that if if it is not matching up to my thesis, right? If it is not matching up to why I bought it for, then I will sell. So that's a very simple rule. The other reason for selling is that if you find something even better, you know. that okay you know this stock looks much better that to me than the current one i am holding because everyone has finite capital even warren buffett has finite capital the capital could be large but even you know even that is finite it's not infinite right so if he is fully invested if you are 100% invested if you have to buy something new you have to sell an existing holding so that could be another reason to sell a uh, third reason to sell is if you are using uh, you know some kind of risk management whether it is a stop loss or something like that right or you know you see some uh, uh, event happening in the company like you know the the uh, uh, management resigning or something like that an adverse event happening or the company buying uh, uh, you know buying a another uh, company doing mergers and acquisitions which you think is uh, value destructive so those kinds of things you will want to then sell so the point here is when you are buying i completely agree with you that in most cases we don't know uh, how far how high that stock can go right only you know people say 10 bagger 20 bagger 100 bagger whatever that is only known in hindsight right when people invested in hdfc bank in 1995 nobody knew it would turn out the way it did otherwise everyone would have invested in hdfc bank right so the point is that uh, ultimately you know all of when you are doing something there is always going to be some amount of self doubt i in fact i think i had written a, a a blog on that that this reminds me and maybe you know put that link out once more that everybody will have doubts there is no investor no i have interacted with so many you know great investors everybody has doubts nobody is you know will say that you know i this is for sure is going to happen whenever you are investing you will think that okay you know only a part of it you you are dealing with the future you don't know what is going to how it is going to play out even the promoter of the company the management of the company is usually don't know what is going to happen right so uh, you have to keep all of these things in mind have a broad framework see if you get the basics right i keep insisting this part with everyone right you don't have to be a messi or a ronaldo or a roger federer if you have the basics right if you can be even a club level player you will come out fine or you will come out better than you know what you would if you are putting your money in fd and real estate and all that that's the whole idea have have the basics right all right sir so sir one question is like uh, when we invest our money and just like you manage public money so is there any challenges uh, which you face like the are you able to carry on the same framework which you do for your investing or there are some challenges when it comes to managing public money as of now i have not found any challenge uh, the challenge might come only when you have very large corpus 
uh, you know, if you become something like a, a, you know, a very large mutual fund, a very large PMS, uh, you know, where you are managing uh, tens of uh, thousands of crores, then it might become a challenge looking at uh, smaller companies. But uh, at uh, at a very small level like us, it, it makes doesn't make too much of a difference. Right, sir. Sir, I have heard you have read almost two thousand plus books. Uh, am I right on this? Yeah, I mean, yeah. So that was a disease I had. Uh, <laughs> in fact, uh, even nowadays also I read a lot, but probably reduced a little bit compared to earlier years. Okay, sir. Any two, three good picks uh, which you recommend uh, at least for the beginners? I mean, for everyone again, but uh, primarily for the beginners. See, uh, I have tried to list down a set of uh, books by category on my blog, right? That's uh, blog. Intel Sense. Uh, if you go there, there'll be a link called My Bookshelf. There's this list of uh, uh, books that I have put out there for people, you know, uh, for who are specially, you know, different categories. Whether it's uh, who are beginners, based on you know behavioral psychology. Uh, fundamentals, technical, quant, all of that. Uh, but I think a uh, couple of books which I would always uh, suggest people to read uh, would be uh, books, uh, Peter Lynch's both the books, uh, One Up on Wall Street and Beating the Street. I think both are you know fantastic uh, uh, reads. Then uh, I think... Uh, Fooled by Randomness is a very good book, although the language uh, is a little bit cryptic at times, but the concept is very important. Uh, I think that's a great book. I think recently I read uh, uh, Morgan Housel's Psychology of Money. I like that a lot. I think that's very important to get the right uh, mind frame uh, in place. Uh, Howard Marks' uh, most uh, important thing also, that that's a very good book. And then, you know, as in when you get more in-depth into individual areas, there are you know so many great books that are out there. Different styles, different people, you know, just, just amazing books that are out there. Yeah, right. You just talked about uh, Howard Marks. So history doesn't repeat, it does rhyme. So I have one question on this. Like you talked about uh, how we should uh, find out the patterns uh, to find out prob uh, probability of historical happening. Not in the sense of timing the market, but again, uh, gauging the major trend of the market, sir. Can you, can you explain the question? I don't think I understood it. So basically, uh, how we should find out the patterns in the market so as to find out uh, the probability of happening a uh, historical event, maybe uh, the market cycles which happened in the past in that sense, sir. So one thing I have realized is, you, uh, you know, uh, which has helped me personally is uh, uh, knowing a lot about uh, financial history, market history, right? Uh, unfortunately, in India, we have very few uh, books that are there uh, about what, you know, events which happened. Uh, for example, the, the web series Scam 1992, right, which, which did so well. Uh, that was based on a book by, uh, by Devashish... Uh, Basu and uh, uh, Sucheta Dalal. Uh, the book is called Scam. Right? That's a very good book. It, it, it covers not only Harshad Mehta's uh, case, it also has Ketan Parekh's one. Uh, very, very interesting book. So, uh, then there's another very good book by Santosh Nair. Uh, I forget the name of the book. Uh, that, that's a very good... Sorry? Bulls and bears, kind of some names, if I remember. Ha, 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 ha. Correct, correct, correct. Bulls and bears of something. So that that uh, uh, that's a very very good book. Again, uh, and th although they, he has changed names uh, of people, uh, you know that are there, but the incidences that he has uh, described are all all uh, real life incidences, right? So that has uh, uh, so once you read those things. Uh, you'll start getting a sense of how things happen, right? And if you again uh, he read history of, uh, you know, American markets, etc., uh, you will 
uh, I mean, American markets. Why? Because again, there's the most written about, right? So it's easy to get. Uh, you you will get a sense of how things have happened in the past. There's a person I think uh, I don't know if people uh, follow him or not. Uh, a guy called Jamie Catherwood. He writes a blog and he he basically talks about financial history. Uh, he delves a lot about uh, very long term history. So you know about uh, uh, what happened in 1500s, 1600s, 1700s, all of those periods as well. But uh, it gives you a certain amount of context of uh, what has happened in the past, etc. You also have very good books of uh, you know with about uh, financial history. So these, if you you know read about what has happened. it's like reading history right if you if you read history you get a sense of uh, what has happened in the past and then you can uh, sort of get a pulse of what might happen so there is no easier way of doing it uh, you know there's no shortcut of doing it in my opinion right sir i i am facing some issues with accepting the requests but i got few questions in the as a dm so i'll be reading those so basically one question is on sir few investable sectors you find uh, uh, say 6 12 months down the line so i think uh, india if you look at what is happening around uh, i think infrastructure uh, is is really doing well picking up so engineering capital goods infrastructure real estate is beginning to pick up uh, autos are beginning to pick up so all domestic focused businesses looks interesting uh, in my opinion export focused i think uh, will have a little bit of a problem now uh, excluding where uh, it is uh, a, a replacement from uh, manufacturing in china because uh, china's share of global exports is in a secular decline globally and and it's bound to happen over the next uh, you know maybe 10 years so uh, if you look at the msci index uh, you know china's weightage has gone down roughly 5% over the last i think 3 years and india has gone up 5% uh, and and i i see the same pattern continuing to go uh, forward because over a period of time the de- because of political compulsions a lot of the larger western countries will reduce uh, sourcing from china and that will go to countries like india vietnam indonesia malaysia south africa uh, latam a lot of these countries so that's that's where the the growth uh, so emerging markets looks much better from the next 10 year perspective uh, compared to uh, developed markets so uh, again coming back to uh, your question of sectors i think any india focused sectors are likely to do well right sir ravi ravi you have any questions yeah one thing uh, like uh, abhishek mentioned that uh, they are also following uh, techno panda in quant model in quant model or technical models uh, what are the parameters what are the levels you look for and what kind of uh, say contrary signal if you get from different parameters uh, different levels if you if you can give with some example uh, it might help us so see in in quant we have multiple systems uh, that are there we look at uh, you know i personally look at uh, parts of momentum and i also personally look at a lot of uh, uh mean reversion kind of stock so basically looking at different moving averages different uh, relative strengths uh, those kinds of things uh that are there and uh, also we have our own proprietary indicators uh, for uh, gauging the market uh, strength uh gauging individual stock strength in that in the market so those are all uh, sort of prop indicators that we created ourselves and uh, uh we use those so so your question was if there are any contradictions between indicators or what what was the question so yeah say uh, say in quant model you might be you must be following some metrics and some level to entry exit so what are they if if you can discuss and uh, when you getting some kind of contradictory signal that uh, uh, because i don't follow quant and technicals that's why i wanted to understand 
कि हाउ डू वन इफ वी वन वॉन्ट टू स्टार्ट रीडिंग अबाउट देम वट कुड बी दार्टिंग पॉइंट इफ आई मे आस्क Okay, so so let, instead of trying to answer your question, let me uh, you know give you a very basic sense. Now, a lot of fundamental investors think that technicals is not for them, and vice versa. Technical uh, investors, traders think that fundamentals is not for them. Right now, the way I look at it is that all of it is information. When you are looking at fundamentals, what are you doing? You are looking at the numbers, historical numbers of a company. you know uh, historical results in in terms of revenues margins etc etc and you are trying to understand the the dynamics of the business what is technicals tell you technicals tell you the dynamics of the market the supply and demand of a stock historically none of this analysis none are neither fundamentals nor technicals is actually forward looking so when you see a lot of people come on tv and say that you know uh technical target is x and y ultimately all those targets are all probabilistic it is the same thing as when you have a sell side report saying that you know this stock fundamentally you know the valuation is uh, 100 and today the price is 80 so we are expecting it to go back go to 100 right so fundamental target technical target those are all probabilistic numbers you people are trying to put up put them up based on some kind of analysis of the past so all analysis you are doing is of the past right so the way i look at it is all of this information whether fundamental whether technical whether macro all of this is information so your job is to look at all those information put that in one bucket put it you know up against your own framework and find out the stocks that you want from them so what i you know my sweet spot is i like good quality companies and i would you know want to buy them when they are in a you know in a in a bullish phase right i mean hopefully everyone would want to do that so that is what i try to look for and i would want to get out when uh, the trend sort of changes so that's the whole idea of using information across the board whether it is fundamental or technical so individual parameters are not that critical as long as you can use a very simple you know in technicals even if you use a very simple moving average right you will actually probably end up uh, doing better than uh, not using it at all similarly if you are a, just a technical trader you will be better off if you uh, especially if you, if you know not if you are not uh, if you are a positional trader with a slightly longer term horizon you will be better off uh, you know knowing a little bit of fundamentals because then you can allocate uh, Uh, much more yeah and uh, one thing on the other side uh, like uh, this is uh, completely on the fundamental side say what we are seeing on the interest rate uh, globally and india where you see what you are hearing in terms of where the indian gsec will settle and uh, what should be the fair valuation uh, given the higher interest rate globally and indian markets global markets are responding to the higher interest rate indian market is not so any any so, so higher interest no so okay so let's put that in perspective okay so if you look at interest rates uh we are probably now back to pre covid levels in india right so uh, if i remember correctly pre covid uh, bank uh, uh, fd rates were up you know 6 6.5% today we are back at those levels during covid it had gone down similarly now you take a look at what is happening in the us in us it has gone up 2x or more than that right in the last one year or in fact much much more than that it has probably gone up 3x 4x so these are not comparable in india or in countries like indonesia you know the impact of interest rates or hikes has been very uh it has actually been very low compared to some of the uh, global larger uh, markets so again i personally don't think that in india we are in a very uh, bad bad shape i think we are doing fairly well and the advantage is that uh, i think most of the input components of inflation looks to be getting you know stable or they have start you know already come down oil is the only joker in the pack 
which uh, keeps going up and down based on uh, uh, Mr. Putin's mood and uh, OPEC's mood and things like that. But uh, other than that, I think uh, we are uh, we are in a decent shape. I think, and this interest rate that, especially in India, people talk about, we just uh, sort of not uh, considering that it's not that we have gone from six percent to ten percent. Ravi, any follow up question, or shall we move on to the next speaker? Yeah, yeah, you can move on. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, Karan, you can unmute and uh, ask your quick question. Yeah, hi. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, Abhishek sir. Good evening, Pin sir. Good evening, Ravindra sir. Um, so I would like to keep it brief, uh, and I would like to, you know, just ask a couple of questions from you, sir. Uh, one being uh, your view on the IT, since we are entering into the result season. We've just, we've just, you know, I think uh, we've just seen the TCS result, and you know, let's see how it reacts tomorrow morning. the adr shows good only for like the last i checked the adr in the us shows good percentage gap up uh okay so we'll see that tomorrow so the it sector view and uh, i would like to ask again overall uh, banking and auto so these three sectors if you can cover for me uh, it would be really helpful sir thank you so, yeah so it see personally when you talk about a sector all view one thing which is very important is to understand what is the time horizon whether we are looking at it for you know one week one day you know six months one year five years what right whether you know tcs results what happens tomorrow to the stock price to me personally is immediate so one month for me one month for me my question one, month, one month again yeah. see the point is one month uh, you don't uh, there are so many random things that can happen in any sector that uh, actually for one month uh, having a sectoral view makes no sense i'll be very blunt about that yeah right hmm. in one month uh, too many things can happen right but in general in my opinion it looks to be soft uh, uh, you you talked about autos and uh, which was the other one banking banking so auto yeah. autos and banking i think look much much better uh, banking i think uh, short to medium term looks uh, actually quite good we, we seem to be coming out of a a, a prolonged period of uh, uh, you know stress so uh, banking should actually do very well over the next uh, you know cycle 3 to 5 years uh what else it uh, again you have to be very very uh, picky and choosy uh, in terms of which companies you get into but in general i think there will continue to be uh, some amount of pressure in terms of large signings etc okay so my reason was that uh, so it why i asked was that uh, do you see a bounce from here or you just uh, you know uh, see it going in the sideways to consolidation zone and then you know give move on the either my DC. my sense short term sense is uh we can see a very short bounce followed by a further fall after which will after which it might uh, stabilize so short term view is probably that uh, uh there's one one uh, leg down still remaining that's what i would uh, you know to me that's a more higher probability kind of uh, event nahi theek hai sir theek hai noted noted i'm of the same opinion theek hai sir thank you thank you sir sir one question is like uh, what we say the fire concept or maybe financially freedom uh, that this buzzword is doing rounds and people are thinking of leaving uh, their jobs so what would be your advice to them like at what point in time we should consider quitting our jobs or uh, yeah on that front if you want to share something so first of all if you if you like your job don't quit there is no there is no glamour there is nothing great in being a full time investor let me let me be very very categorical i have lived both the lives unless you really like being an investor there is there is no greatness in you know uh, there is no bragging rights that you get to if you are if you are a full time investor uh so that that's the first part second is uh, there is no magic number it depends on you know your lifestyle what you want uh, what kind of financial background you come from uh etc which will determine uh you know when 
you are actually financially free there are people who uh, can be financially free with uh, 50000 rupees a month and there are people who uh, will need 5 lakhs and there are some people who will need 50 lakhs so it, it's completely dependent on uh, individuals but basically in, you know if you are able to get your basic lifestyle met with passive income that that is when i think uh, it, it's uh, reasonably safe to sort of uh, leave your job right sir sir i often check your handle and i get to see you share industries which are showing strength so what are the data points or what are the I means uh, what we say the screener which you put so as to find out strength across sectors or companies so if you would like to so these are uh, so basically these are not uh, sectors where there is strength so basically these are stocks so this is a, a sort of a screener where we look at stocks which are near their uh, highs near their uh, you know uh, two year three year five year kind of highs and then try to demarcate them by sectors so basically stocks where if you are you know they are closer to their highs uh, over a slightly longer time frame all right sir although sir we uh, like not on the adverse uh, what we say i just wanted to know the uh, broader framework which you follow at uh, intel sense if you would like to touch upon that yeah i mean see at intel sense we have roughly you know three kinds of uh, services one is obviously the long term one where the focus is more on uh, you know buying good quality compounding kind of stocks and you buy and hold uh, a portfolio of such stocks that that's the first type then you have uh, hit picks which is more of techno funda so where the outlook is more towards uh, buying positional opportunities between you know where you can realize that opportunity within the next 2 to 6 months that's the time horizon we look for each uh, each opportunity and the third is we have a, a quant based system where we look at uh, both the uh, uh, absolute uh, momentum and rotational momentum and uh, that that uh, is what we run and we have uh, uh, you know hit picks and quant as small case and we have another concentrated portfolio called quiver uh, also on small case that is only there on the small case it's not there on our side uh it's it's a very concentrated trend following kind of a a, a model uh 10 stocks only so that we keep and the idea is to buy good quality uh, businesses uh, which are showing price trend uh, right sir so abhishek sir we are almost done with the questions and uh, due to some glitch on twitter i couldn't take all the speaker requests for that uh, we missed out on the questions from those audiences but again it was uh, really nice and so uh, candid on your part to share your journey and all the questions you took and answered very clearly and in, in with brevity so any any closing remarks or any guidance i mean for the at least for the newbies who are just entered or what we say the covid investors you would like to advise them on yeah so first thing is uh, you know you have to have faith that equities you know will create long term wealth uh, because uh, the market is such that that gets tested at times uh, but if you have faith that this is where you know wealth can be created then uh, you know just just keep keep uh, learning keep at it and i uh, this is one of the best uh, if you are interested in the markets which i am assuming all of you are because otherwise uh, you know on a on a weekday evening uh, you would not be here uh, listening to you know some random guy speak uh, then i think uh, you know you'll do well this this is this this is a this is a field which uh, sort of uh, rewards people for their curiosity for their uh, understanding and uh, for their hard work so this, the it, in in a, in a in a way this is too too uh, meritocracy democracy thing we call it everybody starts the same 
Yeah, truly sad, sir. So one last question I just put up in my mind, sir. Any any basic accounting book or the book which covers the brevity of valuation, doing valuation. So any anything do you want to suggest on that front also? uh so there's one a couple of books one book i liked uh, about uh, which an indian book uh, i think Ro- uh, romancing the balance sheet something like that uh, the, the name of the book i think is by uh, anil uh, anil lamba if i'm not mistaken uh, yeah so that that i found is a good book uh, to understand overall you know it's it's written very simple language with indian examples so that's one and uh, there's this book by uh, morning star guy i forgot his name five uh, principles of successful investing by pat dossi right right uh, so that uh, has a very good uh, introduction i think that that's a great book for all investors especially beginners to read uh, it it has basic uh, valuation uh, models it covers uh, individual industries and what you should look at in individual industries uh you know so you'll get a very decent uh, uh, uh grounding in terms of uh, what one should look for in uh, you know when you are looking at uh, research so that that's a very yes yeah, sir so five rules you. for successful stock investing bad dose right sir so thank you so much for agreeing on uh, coming today and sharing your insights with us sir it was really a pleasure to have you today and it was very elaborate and guys this session was recorded for you and it will be uh, like the recording will be available over the spaces and also additionally i'll be putting the recording over the youtube so you can revisit at any point in time and as always uh, sir say there would be a lot of noise around social media so you should question and you should uh, do your due diligence on your part so again this session was purely educational and any names if taken during the conversation were purely illustration so as to tell about the uh, case studies and all so with this i thank you again and thanks for the audiences for keeping for so long uh, thank you sir Thank you thanks a lot thank you good night good night everyone thank you so much